Glitches appear in almost every game that have ever been released. They can range from minor bugs, such as graphical glitches, or you could experience something that breaks the game completely. Some of these glitches can actually be very, very useful, forming the base for a lot of speedruns. In this day and age, it's very common to see developers push updates to their content to fix anything that wasn't intended. You'd think that would make modern glitches fairly uncommon. Save yourself! <laughs> <What>? <laughs> but that's not always the case. Pokemon Red and Blue, being the first games in the Pokemon series, are notably some of the buggiest games to exist. I'm sure you've all heard of Asingno, for example. There are hundreds of documented glitches across these games. A lot of these glitches are never experienced in regular gameplay, but you might be surprised to know that you've probably stumbled into a couple just by completing the game yourselves. In fact, I can almost guarantee the large majority of you experienced at least one glitch during your playthrough. That being said, what would it take to do a true glitchless run of these games? Like, no glitches at all. You might think that'd be easy, right? You'd be wrong. You see, while they may be small, there are a lot of very minor glitches that you see frequently in normal gameplay that you probably didn't even know were glitches. Here, let me give you an example. In these Pokemon games, if you have a move with 100% accuracy, it's supposed to be a guaranteed hit unless your accuracy drops or the opponent's evasion is raised. But there is a 1 in 256 chance that the move will still miss due to a programming oversight. These are the type of glitches a regular playthrough may encounter. If we were to do a true glitches run of Pokemon Red, Blue, or Yellow, we would have to make sure that even the smallest glitches never occurred. And let's not forget, this game is filled with them. Is it even possible to beat the game without experiencing a glitch? I'm doing a run to find out. Of course, like every other game, you start at the title screen. After selecting new game, you are thrown into the introduction. Nothing strange here. Now that we've started a save file, to prevent us from having to get through that lengthy intro again, let's just save the game. Be careful here though. Holding the A button for too long will actually cause a glitch. If you hold the A button while the game is saving, the menu will not disappear until you release it. So make sure you're quick every time you're saving. I know some of you like to be rebellious and will try to leave without collecting a starter, but if you're not careful, you'll cause this very strange glitch to occur. The Invisible Professor Oak glitch. Attempting to leave too many times when choosing your first Pokemon will cause this strange glitch, causing Oak and the middle Pokeball to disappear. Pressing start will then pull up some really glitchy text on screen, and then exiting that menu will put everything back to normal. So make sure you go straight to choosing your starter. Of course, after choosing your starter, we are thrown immediately into a battle against our rival. There are a lot of small glitches within the battle system of these games, but I'll explain them as we encounter them. One glitch that you can encounter in this first battle is a glitch that I did explain before, the 1 in 256 miss. Charmander's Scratch is a 100% accuracy move, alongside Growl and alongside Squirtle's Tail Whip. If any of these moves miss, it's a dead run. I hope you're starting to understand how difficult this kind of run could possibly be. After defeating, or failing to defeat your rival, the adventure can finally begin. However, there is one glitch you may encounter if you decide to route your game a little differently. After leveling up a bit, you can fight your rival on the west side of Iridian City after delivering Oak's parcel. Defeating your rival here and then returning to the lab without catching any Pokemon will have Oak gift you five Pokeballs. How kind. However, we're not allowed to use these Pokeballs. As you can see, one of Oak's lines wasn't scripted correctly and actually overlaps on the final line of text. This counts as a glitch, and therefore ends the run. No free Pokeballs for us. Now, I know we're trying to get through this game as fast as we possibly can, but you'll have to make sure you don't accidentally skip the first badge. How would we do that? Well, on the east side of Pewter, there's an NPC that will take you to the gym. Before interacting with them, if you open your menu and hover over the save without selecting it, then attempt to walk past the NPC, close all dialogues with the B button specifically, and immediately press start to save the game and reset, the conversation will happen again, but the NPC will have disappeared and you will be free to walk onwards to the route ahead. Of course, this is a glitch, so don't do this, okay? We're trying to do these glitches, of course. Remember how I said the battle system is broken in this game? Well, after getting the first badge, Brock will mention how his badge increases the attack of your Pokemon in battle. Oh boy. You see, when you collect a badge in this game, it will correctly increase a specific stat. In Brock's case, it's your attack. However, due to a programming oversight, if any one of your stats are ever modified during a battle in any way, the game boosts all your other stats. In the example I have here, you can see exactly how much damage Scratch does to this Caterpie. It's about half. After it uses String Shot, reducing our speed, the attack boost that the badge gives us is applied once more, so that when you attack this next Caterpie, the damage output is higher. Basically, if your stats are ever reduced or increased in battle, the run is dead. Yeah, that's right. Alright, are you keeping up here? Great, here's another weird quirky glitch you shouldn't do. If you head into the Pokemon Center and somehow forget which of your Pokemon are fainted and which ones are well, 
Be careful not to accidentally deposit a healthy Pokemon and leave yourself with nothing but a fainted Pokemon in your party. Taking one step in this situation will cause you to black out immediately and yep, that's a glitch. This next glitch actually had some really useful application in regular speedruns of this game and was accidentally discovered by a speedrunner named Swap during one of his runs. Swap went to the bike shop to use a bike voucher that he didn't actually have yet. And when you don't have a bike voucher, the game sets a flag for text to be drawn instantly instead of character by character. This obviously makes the text speed go way, way faster and is actually a glitch. Make sure the only reason you go to the bike shop is to get a bike with a voucher. Here we go, another battle system glitch. You are never allowed to be in red health. You heard me correctly. If you're ever in red bar, the game will play a constant sound to let the player know that their Pokemon is in low health and close to fainting. This sound has other unintended side effects that cause other sounds not to play correctly as well as the animations. This speeds up the game substantially as spamming A through dialogue in the battle system will be much faster than before. So make sure you have your potions at the ready and don't hit red bar. This next glitch is something I wanted to include for a little bit of fun. I don't know how many of you know this glitch or whatever, try this, but don't ever attempt to fish in any of the gym statues. Trust me, it'll, it'll end your glitchless run. If you ever need to save and reset your run, never do it on a tile where you've cut a tree down. You see, when you reload your game after saving on this tile, you'll continue your game on that very same tile you saved from, but the tree will be underneath you. This is completely unintended and is considered a glitch. Be careful where you save. Hey, guess what? Here's another battle system glitch. This game is incredibly strange when it comes to dual type Pokemon. If you were to use a move that was neutral on a Pokemon, due to the fact that it's super effective against one of their types and resisted by the other, the game will display the wrong effective text for the attack you used. For example, on Oddish, since it's a grass and poison type, ground type moves are neutral. Grass resists ground, but ground is super effective against poison. The damage is calculated in neutral damage and calculated correctly, but the text that appears will tell you it's super effective when it's not. The move you choose to use is important here and can be applied to many Pokemon, so choose your attacks wisely. Personally, before making this video, I had no idea this glitch even existed. When heading into Lavender Town and going into the Pokemon Tower without a self scope, you'll encounter the ghost Pokemon. This thing still gives me nightmares. If you check the status screen of any of your Pokemon during the battle, it will actually reveal the Pokemon it's meant to be, but it will still act like Ghost. It's purely a visual glitch, but a glitch nonetheless. Speaking of the Sylph Scope, when we've headed to the Celadon Rocket Hideout to collect it, we have to get the Lift Key to get to the floor with Giovanni. After fighting with the Rocket to get the Lift Key, interacting with him after the battle will drop the key to his left. If you just happen to be standing on the same tile where the key drops, it'll be underneath you. You can walk off the item, but not back on it again, and that's a glitch. With said lift key, you can now hop on the lift to reach Giovanni. I know we're trying to go fast, but be careful. If you jump on the lift and accidentally select the same floor you're already on, the lift animation will still play even though you remained on the same floor. Yeah, that's considered a glitch. Anyways, now that we're done here, we need to pick up some beverages for the Saffron City Guards. When headed up to the top floor of the Saladin Mart, if you have just enough money for a fresh water, you will still be able to purchase a lemonade or soda despite not having enough money. I don't know if this is a glitch or if you're stealing at this point, so please make sure you have enough cash. Since we're inside on, I'm sure there's time in the run to check out this weird building down here, right? Well, if you do, make sure you don't hit the A button on this spot right here. You see, this building has almost the exact same layout as the Pokemon Center, and this tile typically has the PC on it. As the Pokemon Center was used as a base here, you can still actually access the PC even though it's not there. This next glitch is a little confusing, and yeah, it's to do with the battle system again. This time, it's about catching Pokemon. In the formula used by the game when attempting to catch a Pokemon, Great Balls, for whatever reason, aren't given the correct value. If a Great Ball is ever used, that's a glitch. Also, if a Pokemon is ever at or below a third of its health, then the formula also miscalculates some stuff. So, no catching Pokemon that have low health. I would love to go into more detail about this glitch, but it is incredibly confusing but you can check out the link in the description which will take you to all the glitches in Pokemon Red and Blue. That will show you exactly why this glitch occurs. Okay, this one is super interesting. When you have a Pokemon that evolves by stone, for this example we have Eevee. If it levels up in battle, but you end the battle with a Pokemon that has an ID number that corresponds to the same ID number of the evolutionary stone it requires, the Pokemon will then evolve. In our case, Onix has the same ID number as a Water Stone, so when the battle is ended with Onix, 
but Eevee has leveled up during that battle, Eevee begins to evolve into Vaporeon. This glitch is incredibly situational, but it could happen depending on the team you end up using for your own run. I know I might have scared you a little with the bike voucher story, but I promise you nothing bad will happen if you actually own a bike and buy it with the voucher. If you still didn't collect the bike though, do not attempt to enter the cycling road. I guess don't enter for two reasons. I didn't expect this to happen when attempting this myself, but for some reason when interacting with this guard, sometimes the sprite will be placed incorrectly, so I guess just don't ever go here. If this doesn't happen to you, please don't hold left while talking to the guard. It's against the law to enter cycling road without a bike, but if you do manage to slip past him though, you will enter the cycling road and have a bike, even though you didn't buy one. Just use the voucher, I promise it'll be okay. This next glitch is definitely one of my favorites. After beating Koga and getting the Toxic TM, you can pair it with a grass type's Leech Seed for it to double stack. You see, in the game, Toxic's parameter increments every turn, which makes Toxic deal more damage with every turn that passes. Leech Seed will also draw upon this parameter when Toxic has been used, so Leech Seed will also stack the damage. Combining these two moves deals serious damage if you can let the turns pass. Oh, also, if a Pokemon faints due to the poison first, Leech Seed will still sap the health of the opponent even though it's at 0 HP. So these two moves are definitely something to consider avoiding. Have you ever felt it was unfair that whenever you draw with an opponent, they always take the win? Well, don't force a draw in this game. This game has an extra level of cruelty to the point where it plays the victory theme in case of a draw, but you will actually still black out to the Pokemon Center. How mean is that? This is where I was supposed to talk about overworld sprite misplacement, but it already technically happened in the cycling road gate. I suppose it happens here too, so you should be aware of it. Just never enter Cinderella Island by surfing from the right side and attempting to enter the gym without the secret key. This guy will show up again. How have we gone this entire video without even talking about critical hits? There are a handful of Pokemon that can learn focus energy in this game, or you could just buy a die hit. They help, right? They increase the chances of hitting critical hits. Wrong. They are intended to quadruple the critical hit chance, but they actually quarter the chance instead due to an oversight in the code. Oops. The EXP share is one of the most useful items in any Pokemon game when it comes to leveling up your team members. In Generation 1, you can't have Pokemon hold items, but the EXP all does exist. If you have this item in your bag, the EXP all will split the experience you get in those battles with your entire team. The EXP all is intended to give 50% experience to the first Pokemon, and then 10% to the remaining 5, adding up to 100% experience. However, if you send out multiple Pokemon in a single battle, for example just two, these two Pokemon will receive 25% experience, adding up to a total of 50, and the 5 Pokemon that are not currently in the battle then receive 5% experience each, adding up to 75%, meaning 25 experience is lost. Once we're in Victory Road, there are a bunch of strength puzzles we must do. One requires you to push a boulder through a hole and then follow it down. Make sure you do this whilst you're off the bike though. If you fall down the hole while you're on the bike, the music that plays when you ride it will continue but you will not be riding it anymore. And that is definitely a glitch. And to top things off, this final glitch happens when you're fighting against the champion and your rival. When fighting the final battle of the game, make sure you're using a team of fully evolved Pokemon. If any of these Pokemon evolve at the end of the battle, the victory music for the battle will not play and it will be completely skipped. And we don't want that now, do we? After carefully tiptoeing through the game, never getting any stat changes, low health, leveling up or evolving your Pokemon at the wrong time, or getting into any other glitchy situations, we've actually still lost the challenge. You know the introduction of the game? Well, the Need Arena that you see at the start of the game actually plays Need Arena's Cry. I can't believe you didn't notice. It's not actually possible to beat Pokemon Red or Blue without encountering this glitch because it's completely unavoidable. That concludes nearly every glitch that you could potentially encounter if you were to attempt a glitchless run of these games. There are so many glitches in this game, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I missed a few, so if I have, feel free to let me know the ones I skipped in the comment section and maybe I or someone else can do a follow up in the future. If you did enjoy this video, of course, please hit the like button down below, don't forget to subscribe to Lowest Percent, and if you'd like to check out my channel, please head on over to Game Boy Loot where I play a whole lot of Pokemon. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully we'll catch you guys in the next Lowest Percent video. Cheers.